Pablo Emilio Escobar, a name that reverberates through the annals of history as one of the most infamous and successful drug kingpins the world has ever witnessed. Born in 1949 in the modest city of Rio Negro, Colombia, Escobar's journey from a middle-class upbringing to becoming the seventh wealthiest individual globally by 1989 is nothing short of astounding. However, it is not the trajectory of his power that we are here to explore, but rather the extravagant properties that stood as testaments to his unsatiable appetite for opulence. Brace yourself for an immersive journey into a world of unparalleled grandeur where we delve into the lavish dwellings that define Escobar's blood-soaked legacy. These states shrouded in luxury and excess serve as windows into a life driven by boundless wealth, and they'll tell a story that captivates and horrifies in equal measure. La Manuela Escobar's wealth was so immense, his influence was pervasive that he found conventional banking methods inadequate for safeguarding his illicit fortune. Instead, he embarked on a quest of concealment, spreading his wealth across an intricate labyrinth of secret locations. Within his tapestry of hidden treasures, one jewel stood out, La Manuela. Situated on a serene waterfront in Gatape, Colombia, this 20-acre estate exuded opulence at every turn. Its amenities rivaled those of the most extravagant resorts, boasting a sprawling pool, tennis courts, and even stables for horses of the highest pedigree. Every corner of La Manuela whispered of Escobar's unwavering commitment to indulgence. The estate bore the name of his cherished daughter, Manuela Escobar, a poignant testament to the pride and devotion he held for. Yet even in this oasis of tranquility, the specter of danger loomed ever-present. Guard towers punctuated the property, a stark reminder that even here, no place was truly safe. Tragically, just months before Escobar's ultimate demise, La Manuela fell prey to an enemy assault. A cataclysmic explosion tore through the estate, reducing a significant portion to rubble. Today, nature has enveloped the ruins and a shroud of greenery, a haunting reminder of a bygone era and the impermanence of ill-gotten opulence. Hacienda Naples Hacienda Naples, a sprawling estate nestled in Puerto Triunfo, Colombia, stands as a testament to Pablo Escobar's grandeur. Its sheer size is nothing short of staggering, surpassing even the expanse of Disneyland Paris. This colossal property stretched across an astounding 7.7 square miles, a domain reserved solely for Escobar and his family's pleasure. It was a realm of wonder where Escobar's extravagant tastes and playful inclinations knew no bounds. At the heart of the Hacienda Naples stood a charming Spanish colonial house adorned with intricate details that spoke volumes about Escobar's refined taste. Beyond the residence, the estate held an array of attractions that would rival any amusement park. A sculpture park graced the grounds, where magnificent artworks dotted the landscape, providing an atmosphere of cultural richness. However, the true marvel lay within the confines of the estate's very own zoo. Escobar's insatiable appetite for the exotic led to the inclusion of a menagerie of rare and captivating animals, adding to the aura of grandeur. The estate didn't stop there. It boasted a bullring, a testament to Escobar's penchant for entertainment with a touch of adrenaline. Additionally, a go-kart racing track provided a thrilling experience for Escobar and his beloved family. This remarkable fusion of safety and amusement within the heavily guarded estate epitomized Escobar's desire to provide both protection and unbridled joy to his loved ones. In terms of transportation, Hacienda Naples was more than capable of accommodating Escobar's extensive collection of vehicles. It featured a private airport that served as a haven for his fleet of private jets, allowing for swift access to and from the estate. The sprawling landscape provided ample space for Escobar to indulge his captivative and automotive passions, and he did so without restraint. Following Escobar's demise in 1993, the fate of Hacienda Nepolis took a dramatic turn. Many of the original structures that once epitomized Escobar's grandeur were either demolished or repurposed for other endeavors. The estate underwent a remarkable transformation, jetting its association with the notorious drug lord and evolving into something new. Today, it serves as a family-friendly theme park, a stark contrast to its previous life as a domain of extravagance and excess. This transformation is a testament to the resilience of a community seeking to move beyond the shadows of its tumultuous past. La Casa Grande La Casa Grande, situated on the Caribbean island of La Isla Grande, was one of Pablo Escobar's hidden gems. Accessible only by a specially designated boat departing from the Cartagena, it stood as a secluded haven from the watchful gazes of those who opposed him in Colombia. In this tiny island community of just over 1,000 inhabitants, La Casa Grande held a significant place in Escobar's empire. It was a sanctuary shielded from prying eyes where Escobar sought solace amidst the chaos that surrounded him. The purpose of La Casa Grande was clear. It was not meant for public scrutiny, but rather served as a retreat for Escobar and his inner circle. It was a place where he could find solace far removed from the ever-watchful eye of his adversaries. The opulence of La Casa Grande was nothing short of staggering. With over 300 lavishly furnished rooms, each adorned with solid gold showerheads, 
It was a testament to the un unimaginable wealth that flowed through Escobar's hands. Every inch of this residence exuded luxury, reflecting Escobar's unyielding commitment to indulgence. Moreover, the estate boasted an expansive swimming pool, a helicopter landing pad, a dock providing Escobar with all the amenities he could desire. Reaching this secluded paradise was no easy feat. It required hours of treacherous trekking through the dense Caribbean forest, a journey fraught with danger. Even then, visitors could catch only a fleeting glimpse of La Casa Grande before being swiftly turned away by an armed guard. The secrecy and ex exclusivity of this hidden oasis added to its allure, making it a sanctuary for Escobar and his closest associates. However, the, with Escobar's untimely demise, La Casa Grande fell into the hands of the government, gradually succumbing to the ravages of time and nature. What was once a bustling center for clandestine meetings among the most powerful figures in the underground world now lay abandoned and forgotten. The sprawling complex once teeming with life has been reclaimed by the wild. Its once grand walls now stand dilapidated and weathered by the passage of time. La Casa Grande remains shrouded in obscurity, its whereabouts obscured to the point that it's absent even from the digital realms of Google Maps. Monaco Building the Monaco building, nestled within the vibrant cities of Medellin, Colombia, is a unique testament to Pablo Escobar's distinctive taste. Unlike the colossal mega-mansions that often defined his opulent empire, this six-story structure held a captivating allure of its own. Despite its comparatively modest size, the building bore an air of enigma and intrigue that set it apart from other properties associated with the notorious drug lord. In 1988, the tranquility of the Monaco building was abruptly shattered by a devastating bombing orchestrated by a rival cartel seeking to strike at the heart of Escobar's power. Forced to abandon his cherished abode, Escobar left behind a building haunted by the echoes of its violent past. The aftermath of this attack left scars both physically and psychologically, as the building stood as a poignant reminder of the dangers that Escobar faced in his pursuit of power and wealth. Ultimately, in 2018, city officials made the bold decision to demolish the Monaco building. This act symbolized a collective desire to move beyond the painful history associated with Escobar's reign in Medellin. This decision marked a pivotal moment in the city's efforts to help reshape its narrative, transcending the shadow cast by the enigmatic figure who once occupied its halls. Hotel Escobar Faced with the precariousness of his existence, Pablo Escobar engineered a remarkable plan to elude extradition to the United States and evade those seeking his demise. In a display of audacity and resourcefulness, Escobar harnessed his immense wealth and influence to construct his own prison, which would be known as La Catedral or, more colloquially, Hotel Escobar. This facility was far from the conventional penitentiary sanctioned by authorities. Instead, it resembled nothing short of a luxurious five-star hotel. Within the confines of La Catedral, Escobar reveled in his self created paradise. The prison boasted a fully equipped casino where he gambled alongside the very men hired to guard him, blurring the lines between captor and captive. A playhouse was constructed for his beloved daughter Manuela, ensuring that even within the confines of captivity, Escobar's family would have space of comfort and joy. Additionally, a spa provided a haven of relaxation, offering an escape from the rigors of daily life. Not to forget his passion for football, Escobar had the Colombian national team ascend the mountains to his mountain prison, where they shared camaraderie and played the sport together. The facade of imprisonment did not sever Escobar's ties to the outside world. In a remarkable display of ingenuity, he outfitted a la cathedral with state-of-the-art communication devices, allowing him to continue running his vast drug empire from afar. It was a testament to Escobar's unyielding determination and resourcefulness, proving that no matter the circumstances, he remained indomitable, destined to cast his ominous shadow over Colombia for years to come. However, this illusion of control would not last. Reports surfaced of Escobar's involvement in the torture and murder of four lieutenants within La Cathedral, leading to the Colombian government to deem it necessary to relocate him to a conventional prison. Escobar defiantly refused, and after a mere year and a month in La Cathedral, he once again slipped through the authorities' grasp. This triggered a relentless manhunt led by Colonel Hugo Martinez and a formidable 600-man unit known as the Search Block, trained by the United States Delta Force. On December 2, 1993, Escobar met his fate at the hands of the man sent to apprehend him, marking the end of an era. As for La Cathedral, the once feared stronghold that housed the world's most notorious drug lord, it underwent a remarkable transformation. Today, it stands as a monastery, a beacon of spiritual solace. The echoes of its tumultuous past have given way to religious pilgrimages and poignant memorials honoring Escobar's victims. This transformation serves as a powerful symbol of resilience, representing a community that seeks solace and closure, transcending the shadows cast by the enigmatic figure who once occupied its halls.